There it goes. Oh. There we go. It is adding you. Yeah, something happened the first time. So I had to delete it. Welcome back. There you go. Hello. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Fine. How are you? Good. Good, good. I made sure I took um, a pill. They gave me some <laughs> pearl pill. Oh, Tesalon pearls? There you go. They gave me that yeah. for my cough. So I took one an hour ago so I don't cough like crazy. I took those for a while after I was first diagnosed. Yeah, me too. And then they gave it to me again. I love those darn things. But I've been taking it yesterday. I didn't take it at night. I was coughing so bad that I literally got off my bed and ran to the bathroom because I just ended up just throwing. I was throwing up like crazy. Oh, God. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I made sure I took it, so <coughs> I'm trying not to cough. I had Steve make me some tea. I don't know what cold tea, so that should be good. <laughs> All right, All good. Right. Hey, Patty. Um, so well, how do I see who's watching? Swipe. Is there some? Screen? Yeah, on your yeah. screen, either swipe left or right. I don't remember which one it is. Just don't. Just oh, I don't see. Get... You see it? Okay. All right. Okay. So, so basically how this goes, I just introduce you. You just share your story. I might have some questions. It's all about you. And then people that are viewing, if they have questions, they'll ask. So you'll be able to see it and you can answer them as, okay. as, as you talk. So, um, so yeah, we got, we got a bunch of viewers now. So great. Okay, right, guys. good. Thank oh, you guys. That's for all viewing. names I recognize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining in. Thank you guys. Um, for um, supporting, please do share this. Um, it's live, so but share it so other people can see it. Some people might know about it, some people don't, but it's always great to, to spread the word and to bring awareness uh, with lung cancer. So today's interview is Sarah. Um, God, Sarah, we met, it was the Longevity Hope Summit, or I don't remember where Yeah, we I met. think we, we first met at the Longevity yeah. Summit. But now I, we keep running into yeah. each other all the time, all right. doing all kinds of cool stuff in D.C. Exactly, exactly. So I had the pleasure of meeting her, getting to know her, uh, becoming my sister, just getting really close. And um, Sarah is also a great, great lung cancer advocate. So while she's sharing her story, she will share her advocacy work and everything that she's done. Her and I just got back from D.C. last week. Uh, we went with the Go To Foundations for Lung Cancer, and it, I loved it to go up to the hill and to talk to our state reps and our and our senators, and just to talk to them about the importance of funding for lung cancer research. I loved it, guys. I think I just loved it. I love going it was, up there, and it was a great experience. Yes, just walking the, through the halls, yes. walking past all the offices, and feeling like. Yes. Yeah, this is the, we are able to participate in the process, and yes. hopefully, uh, we made an impact. I think we did. Yes, 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 we did. And so, you know, unfortunately, I came back sick. I think I, I don't know if I messaged you, text you. I text everyone, message everyone that I could possibly think of that was there. I'm like, hey guys, I woke up with the fever. I took a nap. I got. I woke up with the fever. I'm sick. Is anyone sick? Nope, nope, nope. I was the only one that got sick. Go figure. Only Juanita. So um, <laughs> I got. Uh, we got a surprise for you. Oh hi! Say hi, Mira. 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 Is oh Sarah? my gosh. Sarah. Sara in Spanish. Sara. Saluda. Sara. Hola. Hi, she's Sarah. like. She's like, I don't know about this. <laughs> She's busy looking around. Oh, oh, oh where are you going? Oh, you going? my God. Going? Give me a kiss. Okay, say bye, Sarah. Say bye. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> He's an oh, idiot. My. <laughs> I don't have any visitors. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> this house is crazy right now. So I told all my kids are in the kitchen, and they were loud. I'm like, guys, shut up. I'm... I'm going live in a few. Don't you dare make any noise. This house is crazy. So they brought her, they brought her yesterday to cheer me up because it was my mom's two-year anniversary. 
So she cheered me on and they brought her back today. So I'm happy now. But yeah, so I, I come back sick and no one came back sick. So I had to cancel my trip for tomorrow to Atlanta. My doctor. Yeah, was, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. You know what? Both my doctors, my cardiologist and my family doctor here, they both said, Juanita, don't. Just cancel. We want you to rest. Uh, we don't know what the hell's going on with you, but we know that you're fighting an infection. We want you to rest. So I'm just going to take the advantage of rest because in a couple of weeks, I'm leaving to um, Puerto Vallarta with my uh, daughter who turns 21. So it's like Oh, half, fun. So it's half a family vacation. So it's my three girls, my husband and I. My boys can't go. So I got to be well for that. So I, yep. chose, I chose that over Elk Summit. It's okay. There's always one next year. That's so, right. So, guys, I give it over to Sarah, and I'll let Sarah begin. She's going to share her story, her, her, her amazing advocacy work, and she's also going to let us all know what gave her hope then and what gives her hope now and what she wants to see in the lung cancer world. So go ahead, Sarah. Take it away. All right. Thanks so much, Juanita. Thanks for having me do this. I've watched some of the other ones. I am always so impressed to hear everybody's story. Um, Mine basically began 2016. Um, I was having a great year after a couple of rough years, um, settling into a new house with my kids. I was in a new relationship with the woman who's now my wife. And um, working, I had gone back to uh, landscaping, which is something I had been, you know, I had done uh, for many years. Mm -hmm. I had just gone back to doing that. I do income taxes in the winter, landscaping in the summer. And I felt great. I was strong. I mean, I was out working like an animal, sweating mm -hmm. like a beast all summer <laughs> long. And then the fall came and I started to feel a little bit, uh, you know, <coughs> a little bit of a cough. <coughs> it was right on cue. Yeah. I had a little, a little bit of a cough, a little bit of shortness of breath. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm probably at that age. I'm starting to develop seasonal allergies, mm. um, something along those lines. And didn't really give it much thought because, again, I was so super healthy. And... Um, that went on for a little bit. And then uh, that November, visiting my son at college, uh, we were out shopping and mm -hmm. I felt this pain in my back. I thought somebody came up behind me and shivved me. <laughs> I was Ooh. like, what, what was that? I remember I walked right out of the market, sat down on the sidewalk outside, and I thought, this is, this is something interesting. Um, so we start Googling, of course, you know, it's like Dr. Right. Google and you're like, oh, what could this be? And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I've had this cough. I've had a little bit of this. <clears throat> and I was like, now I have this pain in my back. So we're like, well, maybe it's a little walking pneumonia. Um, right. could, could have been that from the symptoms. Uh, I was like, maybe it's pleurisy. I find like pleurisy in there. And I was like, oh, that sounds exciting. It's like very old, fa <laughs> old fashioned disease. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I was like, I got a little bit of the pleurisy. <clears throat> And uh, so we come back from uh, Philadelphia and I was like, I guess maybe another week or so went by and I was still having this pain in my back. And I thought, I, I got to go get this checked out. So I went to my primary care doctor and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm one of the lucky ones in that sense, because for somebody in my situation who was minimally symptomatic, um, I have heard so many stories about women, men in my position, strong, healthy, youngish, and mm -hmm. uh, go to the doctor with the, presenting with the symptoms that I was and are just, uh, oh, here, you know, we're going to give you an inhaler or we're mm -hmm. going to put you on a, yeah. put you on a Z pack or yeah. we're going to just, you know, uh, it, it's probably, it's just a little respiratory thing. It's going to clear up whatever. And, uh, I feel extremely fortunate that it was my doctor's, uh, one of the physician assistants in his office. I didn't even see him. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, I gave her my spiel about what was going on. She said, you know, I really want to send you for a chest x-ray. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. So I went actually that day for a chest x-ray, which is, again, like I said, pretty remarkable because there are a lot of people in my situation who would be told by the doctor, oh, well, you know, it could be a little this. Yeah, it probably is a little bit of allergies. We're going to... We're going to do this. We'll put you on some Zyrtec, you know, whatever. They, yeah. they wouldn't, wouldn't really take it so seriously. But she, she sent me right for a chest x-ray. And um, I'll I never forget because I was recently, I had an x-ray in that same room at the hospital. And 
I, I flashed back to that experience because like mm -hmm. I walking in that room, I thought, oh my God, this is a room where it really all kind of started because mm -hmm. they did the chest x-ray. And I remember the technicians, when I left the room, I think it was just coincidence. They probably say that to everybody. They said, oh, good luck with everything. And I was like, good luck with everything. I was like, I got the pleurisy. I don't know. I was like, good luck with what, you know? <laughs> right, so, right. So I, uh, you know, that's the end of that. Well, the next day I was at the bank. We were leaving for Florida the following day. Um, we were going to see my wife's sister for the weekend. And um, I, uh, I get a call from the doctor's office. And I step outside the bank to take it. And she says, oh, uh, we'd like to send you for a CAT scan based on the chest hmm. x-ray. And I was like, huh, like, what's that about? And I said, mm -hmm. okay, well, I said, I'm going to Florida tomorrow morning. Uh, let's set it up for sometime next week. And she goes, well, let me make a call, see if I can get you in today. And that wow. was kind of a, that was like a real oh shit moment for me yeah, because right. I was like, what do you mean, you know, get me in today? I was like, what's the urgency, you know, this, pleurisy or right. whatever you know I, I still was not really thinking and that like something a little bit shifted in my brain right then when she was like let's get you in today so I get we go over to the imaging center and I've got my prescription and I have the report they they give <clears throat> me the report from the chest x-ray mm -hmm. and we were sitting in the waiting room and Martha's sitting next to me on the couch and mm -hmm. we're looking at this paper and it's the results of the chest x-ray and it says mass. Oh. And that was like, and she actually flipped the paper over like to like she was going to read the back because she thought, oh God, I hope she didn't see the word mass. And I was thinking, I hope she didn't see the word mass. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in and uh, have the CAT scan and then sure enough this is on a all on taking place on a thursday and i can't get any information from my doctor we cancel the trip to florida because by then we're thinking something's really going on yeah and um canceled our trip and uh i kept calling the doctor's office they wouldn't tell me anything on the phone they said you just need to come in and see him on monday morning so pretty much knew that there was something bad mm -hmm. going on Went in to see him. He said, uh, he's a lovely man. He's a really, I'm very lucky to be in such good hands. And he said, Sarah, I'm not going to lie. He said, this really looks bad. He said, it's, it's come back highly suspicious for malignancy. And um, we need to get you in for a biopsy as soon as possible. So he sets me up for a biopsy that Thursday mm -hmm. in the in the meantime, my cough is getting worse, and I wake up the next morning coughing up blood. Oh. And it was, in, you know, alarming, <laughs> to right, say the right. least. That hadn't happened before. So, uh, so we made the decision to just go to the ER, and we actually went to the ER in a different part. Of, I live on Long Island. I'm out on the East End where... It's like the healthcare out here is getting better, but it hasn't yeah. really been outstanding yeah. historically because we're, we're kind of a little bit remote from like yeah. New York City metropolitan area. So I went, we went to the emergency room much closer to the city in, 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 in the area where I grew up. And that was the area that I was <laughs> scheduled for the biopsy anyway. And they sent me, they took me right in. They sent me for some scans and they found, you know, they confirmed, you know, the, the chest x-ray they already had the results of. They did a CT of the abdomen and pelvis where they found suspicious spot in my liver. They found a couple of suspicious spots in my kidney. Um, they made the decision to admit me. And over the course of a four-day hospital stay, I then had uh, brain MRIs where they found brain lesions. So pretty much by the end of the week, it was confirmed that, yes, I not only had lung cancer, but I had metastatic lung cancer with, you know, not extremely ex extensive spread, but pretty much. I mean, right. I had it in distant locations, so it was right. automatically stage four lung cancer in my brain potentially in my kidney, in my liver, and in multiple sites throughout my lungs. There was my primary tumor, but then I also had multiple mm -hmm. um, nodules that were suspicious right. for metastatic disease. So that was a really, uh, that was a shock. Right, <laughs> you know? oh, of course, yeah. It was the last thing, last thing I was expecting. Um, 
I lost my mom to lung cancer 10 years ago. Okay. And in her case, she had been a lifelong smoker. So she kind of was like, oh, well, this was almost like she expected it in a, in an mm -hmm. awful kind of way. Mm -hmm. And, um, this was sort of different. It was nothing that I expected. I mean, to be honest, I don't know if you can tell that I have a pretty nice tan going at the moment, but mm -hmm. I always <laughs> thought because I'm somebody who loves the beach and I worked outside yeah. as a gardener, I thought, oh, if anything gets me, it'll be skin cancer. Skin cancer, yeah. You know? I And I go for skin cancer checks regularly. Mm -hmm. I'm on the, like, high alert list with the dermatologist. Every six months, they comb over my whole body. And... um Never. I mean, lung cancer just came sneaking out of the shadows. Uh, never saw it coming. Right. So, you know, that was where we found out all of what was going on with me. It was two weeks before Christmas, three weeks before Christmas. I got out of the hospital, I guess, about two weeks before Christmas. That was pretty devastating. Um, and the decision was made based on my uh, initial you know, what had come back from the biopsy, they mm -hmm. confirmed that it was lung cancer, but at first they weren't entirely sure. They thought it might've been small cell. They it took them a little while to pin down that it was not, it was actually okay. non-small cell adenocarcinoma. Okay. And we pressed for genomic testing because Good. we, yeah. you know, we, we have a lot of medical knowledge. I mean, we had a lot of people, you know, providing input, you know, doctors that we mm -hmm. knew, um, you know, socially, professionally from other aspects of our lives. And in addition to having like a really good team of, you know, my wife, who was a medical social worker, my sister, who's tenacious researcher, my brother, mm -hmm. like, we're all really, uh, you know, super engaged and, and uh, on the ball. And so we had done our research, we knew that what I really needed to have done was this genomic testing, to see if I had a targetable mutation. Um, the really, the, one of the darkest parts of my whole story is that while we were pressing for this genomic testing, the <coughs> oncologist I was seeing at the time <coughs> said, this is a very aggressive thing. We need to start you on chemotherapy immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, without waiting for my testing to come back, uh, they started me on a pretty aggressive uh, regimen of chemo. I was on etoposide mm -hmm. and cisplatin, pretty harsh. I lost my hair almost immediately. Yeah, I was on that too. It just boom. It was, it's horrible. Yes. <laughs> it it was pretty rough, and I started on. They said, "Okay, we're going to start you. It's three days in a row, uh, mm -hmm. long infusions, and then you're going to go every three weeks for the yep. three consecutive days." Yeah. And they said we're going to start on the 22nd of December. And so you'll go the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And I said, well, how can I go on the 24th? That's Christmas Eve. And they said, well, because we, that, that's the way it's going. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, I can't believe I'm going to be sitting in a chemo chair on Christmas Eve. Like, the whole thing was so mind-blowing to me. So that's what I did. I started on the 22nd, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Uh, then three weeks later, back at it again, three weeks later, back at it again. And we kept asking, well, what about these tests? You know, weren't you testing me for these uh, markers? Like, where is that paper? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're waiting on that. That's going to come mm -hmm. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until like the end of February after I had my oh, fourth, God. Yes. fourth chemo cycle, they said, Oh, I got a call from the doctor. First, he was going to put me on Keytruda because yeah. I was I was struggling with the effects of the chemo. But after the fourth cycle, it was really kicking my ass. Yeah. So the, there was some talk about putting me on immunotherapy. And then I get a call. And I remember I was sitting in my room in my bed. And the doctor called himself. And he said, oh, I have great news mm -hmm. um, and everything's relative. I mean, there's no real great news when you have cancer, <laughs> but, but I, know, right? <laughs> I hit the jackpot. I had the hey. EGFR mutation, which uh -huh. is, you know, as you know, like we're the lucky ones because yeah. we have target targetable yeah. mutations. 
And so I said, okay, great. What does that mean? Oh, there's a target therapy we're going to put you on. Now, like I said, this was late in February. I think we might have even been into March. And I got that paper. When I got a copy of that paper with my results of the genomic testing, it was dated, the report was dated December 23rd. So I was in the chemo chair on December 23rd. I had started the day before. I could have never had those four rounds of heavy chemotherapy. So I still look back on that and I think, you know, that was, excuse my language, that was such a huge fuck up in my treatment path because... You know, I know I'm rocking the cute short hair now, but, you (laughs) know, know. I lost all my long, beautiful blonde hair that I loved so So much. I I know. I went through a hell. I gained like 40 pounds on steroids because I was on heavy steroids with the chemo and for my brain meds. It was really like, uh, you know, and I still look back and I've changed oncologists, not because of that, because of a lot of other reasons, but I really almost would like to go back and say, Hey, like what happened? Who dropped that ball? Was this paper sitting on somebody's desk who just, I I just didn't read it? Like, I I don't understand how they could have had a report dated that far in advance. So in addition to urging any newly diagnosed lung cancer patient, you must, you must, you must get treated. You must get tested for these mutations. It's the most it's it's a game changer it's the most important thing but not only do you have to push for that testing we did push for the testing you need to ride everybody's asses like every day yes. you need to call and say where's that report did yes. you get that report can somebody check on it check on it check on it because i i it's appalling to me that like i was you know and the chemo was was it, it was effective it did reduce my primary tumor but I would have had much more success had I been on targeted yes. therapy right yes. from the get-go. And so I was switched at that point to Tarsiva, which is a target therapy for the mutation I have, which is the EGFR mutation. And uh, had a really successful run on Tarsiva for only mm-hmm. about eight months um, okay. in that, that November um, something showed up on a CAT scan that was confirmed on a PET scan that I had progression in my liver. My, the tumor that had mm-hmm. been in my liver from diagnosis was starting to grow and be active again. Mm-hmm. So they biopsied that. They found out that I had a resistance mutation, which is when your one mutation kind of flips, flips a switch and, yeah. you know, develops another, another mutation. So I was again, super lucky <laughs> that I had the T790M mutation okay. and was able to go on to Tigriso, which is, I mean, talk about your miracle drugs. Mm-hmm. It is really like, uh, you know, that really was like the lucky point in my treatment that I was able to, because Tarsiva was, it was it was doing a good job mm-hmm. treating my cancer, but it had pretty harsh side effects. Um, you know, I had skin rash, crazy. You know, I had fatigue. I had, but it was mainly like the rash. I had sores in my mouth. I had sores in my eyes. Oh. I had like, you know, it oh. was like, you know, and I really just kind of felt crappy that whole summer. I had terrible joint pain. Um, so switching to Tigriso was. Uh, a godsend, and I've mm-hmm. had I've I've now been on the Tigriso for oh like eighteen months, and oh, okay, good. I my last scan was remarkable. They they described my uh, my liver is looks clear, which is good. amazing, um, and my primary lung tumor, which was about four centimeters. Um, on diagnosis, they described it as just like looking like a thin scar. Okay, almost. good. You know, so nobody's actually saying no evidence of disease, but it, it really like it's barely visible yeah. that I even had that primary tumor. Good, good. I also didn't mention that the brain metastases I had. I had six um, six lesions in my brain, 
Mm-hmm. And those were all treated uh, about a month after I was diagnosed. The uh, lesions in my brain were treated with gamma knife uh, targeted mm-hmm. radiation. Mm-hmm. And so far, so good. My brain looks beautiful. Awesome. So, all, Woo! Yeah. So all my, all my scans have been, uh, been great up in the awesome. brain. So, so, so far, so good. I mean, the drug I'm on also, um, the Tigriso, the targeted therapy that I'm on also has a great reputation for crossing the blood brain barrier, which is Mm -hmm. not a lot of oral medications are able to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Tigriso does that. So I feel like that's a little extra insurance that, you know, I'm not going to have for the brain meds at the moment. Um, you know, so as lucky as, as I am and as lucky as all that is, uh, anything could change exactly. you know we live we live scan to scan i get uh my mm-hmm. chest and abdomen pelvis scanned every three months mm-hmm. and i get my brain now i'm on a six month recall to have my brain scans okay. um but you just you know it's the drug i'm on as much of a miracle as it is someday is going to stop working that's the reality it is not a forever it's not a cure I am not cured. Um, I'm still living with stage four cancer every day and just kind of waiting. And you know as well as I do, every day we go on our Facebook groups and we read updates from people that we know and love dearly. And, you know, they're coasting along doing great. And then, boom, some shit hits the fan. And... That's that's what we do. We live kind of walking around on quicksand because yeah. you you just don't know if your next step is going to be the one that sends you under. And uh, that's why I have gotten more and more involved in advocacy work. I hope to continue to ramp that up. I, I didn't really write at the beginning because I was so overwhelmed well, course, and also yeah, really yeah. feeling so sick. But You know, now that I'm here two and a half years strong after diagnosis, I feel like it's I have a responsibility to be out there speaking on behalf of the people Mm -hmm. who can't do it, either because they're no longer here or because they're too sick to to be out and, you know, going to Capitol Hill with us and, you know, showing up and doing these things and fundraising and you know all that goes along with that i feel like well the, we have an obligation to do that for the those of our brothers and sisters with this disease who yes, can't exactly so you know and i feel honored to be able to do that and uh i get to hang out with some people like you <laughs> <laughs> i know it's awesome so, yeah we had such a good time in dc but even in dc i was already feeling I was so tired. Like everyone's like, Juanita, you're not your bubbly self. I go, guys, I'm exhausted. But that's because I was coming down. Well, you down were with coming something. down with something, yeah. exactly. And so I but was I found, really- that, I found that it was kind of, I mean, any of these, like the first time I went to the Hope Summit, I was uh-huh. blown away that I was in this room full of people who were yeah. lung cancer patients, survivors. Yes. And I said to so many people, you know, if, somebody had gotten off on the wrong floor in the hotel and wandered into that ballroom, they would not think this was a room full of lung cancer patients. It could be anybody. We could have been, you know, zoologists. I don't know. We could have been anything, (laughs) you know? And, uh, and the (coughs) fact that we were all people living with this gruesome disease was like pretty amazing. And I found that was very powerful, but the more that I've gone to these type of things and participated in lung cancer events and lung cancer mm-hmm. advocacy and awareness, it, it does get a little harder and heavier for me because I'm acutely aware of the people that, oh, I met her last year. She's not here this year. You know, I, know. I hugged her this year and now she's gone. So uh, that's always in my mind. And yeah. when we were when we were speaking on Capitol Hill with the representatives, I mean, we were throwing out some pretty uh, shocking statistics because we, you know, to capture people's attention, you need to do that. You can't just yeah. be like, oh, well, please, we'd like some money. We have to really say we're dying. You know, yeah. lung cancer patients are dying. We're dying in tremendous numbers. But I got home from that trip and I just thought, oh, my God, if I have to say how many of us are dying every day, you know, yes. like I, that it's really like it was like a gut punch, you know? Yeah. So 
It um, is. It's very tiring. I, I, I come home tired all the time. My no, son it emotionally yeah. it emotionally drains, it drains you. you. My son yep. here, he's like, you need to stop going on these trips. You're always coming back sick. You're not traveling no more. And I just laugh at him. But, you know, he's just making sure his mom's okay. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's important, yeah. too. Yeah, that is important. Before I forget, Sarah, my friend Judy, she asked yes. a couple questions. She... Oh, I know. I see the questions yeah. going by, but then they disappear. Yeah. No, you just have to scroll down. She said, what is a mut mutation testing? So a mutation testing, um, Judy, is what we call biomarker testing or genomic testing where they test your tumor to see what type of gene mutation you have. Sarah's EGFR positive, I'm ALK positive. So there is specific treatment for, for um, gene mutation. So it, it could be immunotherapy or it could be targeted therapy, which Sarah and I, she's on, on, on one pill, I'm on a different pill that targets our specific gene. Um, and then she asked, she goes, how do you ladies deal with anxiety? Oh, Ooh. it's called Ativan. No, just <laughs> Oh, I was going to say wine, but, uh, yeah, you know. so how do Xanax. you deal with, I know, Xanax. so how do you deal, she wants to know how do you deal with anxiety? Um, well, interestingly, like a year before I, well, no, maybe it was like two years before I was diagnosed or a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I was having severe anxiety for the first time in my life. Um, I had a lot going on in my life. It was a, there was a move. There, there were just so many things happening. And I was having anxiety attacks. I was progressing to panic attacks. So I actually went on an anti-anxiety drug that I take every day. I take Lexapro, very low dosage of that. And just it was about a year I was on that. And I was feeling like, okay, like I, I've kind of leveled out all this situational uh, stuff right. in my life that was kind of like sending me over the edge. Then it all leveled out. Things were really copacetic and everything was going well. And I thought, oh, I've got to wean myself off of that. I don't think I really need to yeah, be taking yeah. that because I, I was yeah. never anxious before. And then I got hit with a lung cancer diagnosis and I thought, well, not so fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, uh, maybe it's not the right time to stop taking this. So, uh, you know, that I have a little pharmaceutical help to cope with anxiety of the disease. Um, but I also have a lot of um, just coping strategies that I use, you know, in my life, whether it's I walk every morning pretty mm -hmm. much. I take long walks that clears my head. It's good. keeps my body strong, keeps me healthy. And, um, but it's also really good for just kind of like blowing any of the crap out of my head. Um, you know, I like to be in nature. I like to be in the, at the beach, spend time with my family. I do the things, you know, uh, a terminal diagnosis really helps you refocus very well on what is, what is important to you. Right. And I have found that really just staying in the day and, taking advantage of all the things that I really do enjoy to do is mm -hmm. that sort of keeps me calm and happy and keeps me from really going to that place of like, Oh my <laughs> God, like what is like, what's going to happen? You know, you know, when I, like I was saying, like when I see the friends of mine that I've met through this disease have disease yes. progression, yes. have, uh, you know, really struggling <clears throat> Uh, my heart breaks for them, but I, it also breaks a little bit for me because I do have that feeling of there, but for the grace of God, go I, that, yeah. you know, I could be next, you know, my next scan could be the one where I start spiraling. So, um, it is, it's a tricky, tricky path to walk in that sense. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I use my strategies that help me cope with it every day and to have a lot of gratitude for all the things that are great in my life. And that, you know, I'm here for another day. Like yes. I say, you know, the kids always say, I, I don't know your, if your kids say it cause it's maybe it's regional and you're in a different part of the country, <laughs> but like, you know, they say, Oh, I'm not here for that. You know, meaning like, I don't want to do that. Like, you know, I'll say, oh, we're having Brussels sprouts for dinner and you get, oh, I'm not here for that. Or, yeah. um, or I am here for that, you know, like, and then I'll say, oh, but we're having this for dessert. Oh, I'm here for that. You know, yeah. it just means like, I'm like, I'm down with that. I'm so into it. Right. And I, every time I hear it, I kind of think, you know, it's funny. I have my own little twist on it because every time I get to see 
something new happen in the lives of my family, I just think, oh my God, I'm here for this. I'm yes. here for this. Yes. And like, I didn't really think I was going to be. So like, I say that to myself all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to buy my daughter a prom dress. I'm actually here for this. Yes. You know, my 14 year old, he's working his first job. He's there tonight. You know, he just got a job as a bus boy. And I think I can't believe I'm here to see that. Like, yes, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yes. So I, you know, I focus on that and, um, you know, I find that those are things that really help me a lot with, uh, you know, keep me calm and keep me right. centered and happy is focusing right. on what I, I what I do have. Yes, Hi, I do Barb. agree. Yeah, I know Judy also asked, is, um, is it a standard test? <laughs> <laughs> well, it we, should I be. Laugh. It's, yes, <clears throat> I laugh because it should be. Hi, Mama. I laugh because every doctor, I don't care if you're an ER doctor, I don't care if you're a family practitioner, I don't give a shit what you are. Every doctor, if you have a patient in your office and just came back that they got lung cancer, the first thing, it should be biomarker testing. And no, Judy, it's not standard testing yet, but me, Sarah, and a bunch of us, that's what we're doing. We're fighting for that. We need to make it. We're trying to make, we want to make it a standardized testing, period. Just like you go see your doctor, you haven't been there for a while, when was your last mammogram? Boom, they write a prescription. Like yesterday, my doctor, I'm like, doctor, I don't need a mammogram. Yes, you do, Juanita. No, I don't. Yes, you do. She argued with me. She wrote me the prescription. Fine, I'll go get that <laughs> damn mammogram. I hate that it smashes you and it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, you got to do it. You, I don't care. And she talked to me. So just like that, where I walked in and I walked in because I have a fever and it doesn't go down. Now I got a cough and I was in the ER. Fix me, doctor. Mammogram. Just like the, every, every doctor I've been to. Have you had a mammogram? Have you had a mammogram? And I'm looking at them like, no, I don't want a mammogram. I'm here for something else. That should be, your, yep. what, you got diagnosed with lung cancer, biomarker testing. Here you go. Get but I, I don't remember, like, when we were at the Hope Summit, one of the doctors on the, one of the panels that we were mm -hmm. listening to gave some statistic that really, like, blew my socks off about how, uh, how many patients don't get the testing mm -hmm. or they get biomarker testing and then the biomarkers not even acted on yeah like you know they get it and and they don't do anything with the results yep. and that really it blows my mm -hmm. mind because i mean i will say it again the drug that i'm on right now is nothing short of a miracle yes. people say to me all the time they're like oh you don't look sick you don't seem sick mm -hmm. you know oh you're doing all this stuff and people say all the time oh so sarah's in remission or she's better, she's cured. No, I'm not. I'm just lucky that I have a drug that's really that's, doing yes. amazing things. But, you know, the key thing to remember is it's not forever. We need the next breakthrough. We need the next great thing. We need it for so that when somebody like me yes. has progression, there's a next place to plant yes. my foot. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's, that is key. And I, it breaks my heart to think that there are patients who, who never get tested for this right. and they're exactly. just put on, they're put on the treatments that were the standard yeah. of care 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yes. when there is cutting edge medicine happening, precision medicine that's available now. And, um, yeah. you know, every, but everybody you, should have access to that. But you know, Honestly, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I don't care if I'm live. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who sees it later. But you know why they put us on traditional chemo radiation? When you said your story and you said that it was dated December 23rd and you didn't find out to after or, you know, mm -hmm. that's what happened to me. I did not get my, my biomarker testing result to the last day of my chemo. The third day, I was in the same regimen like you. And you know what? Steve would ask every day. He would come. He would call. What about her test? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. It took him six weeks. I truly believe, Sarah, what they, you know what they do? If doctors give chemo, they get a cut. Them uh. freaking, they get a cut. That, I'm sorry. That's the truth. My husband would get on here and say it because he's so, <laughs> you, know, you know, Steve would get on here with the mask he had on earlier. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no he'll, they get a cut. You give chemo and doctors give payouts. 
So, of course, they didn't tell you right away, girl, because they wanted to get paid from the chemo that they gave you. And that, excuse my language, but that's fucked up. It is. It that absolutely is. is. But see, they got people like us. And you now. don't really know. I mean, you know, in, in my, uh, you know, sometimes if I can't sleep at night, I lay there and I think, you know, I wonder if I have a legitimate malpractice suit against them because I, I, why was I you. why was I sitting in a chemo chair for two months when I, I could yes. have just been waking up sure. in the morning and taking this miracle pill? It you was know, money for them. They were putting monies in their pocket. That's all. Yeah, it's it's sorry, hard I, to that's know. Just me and Steve would agree, and a lot of would agree. That's why it's so important that we do these. Um, uh, like we did, we went up to the hill and talked to yep. our, our 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 people and say, "Look, we need this funding for lung cancer right. research. We want to live longer." So, uh, for example, Judy, um, I, I think um, um, Sarah. After this, after Tegrisso, there's nothing else for you left, right? Well, let's not be quite that grim. No, no, no. no I know, but <laughs> no, I, know, I know there's there two. is not. <laughs> Hi, Lana. There's <laughs> no, not I know a what I'm saying. no, but there's there's not a like a clear path. Like like the treatment on that I'm on right now mm -hmm. is is really it's like the gold standard. But if I like when I have progression, everything's going to be on the table. I mean, right. I can go. No. I'll probably be back on chemo. I'll be back on like some combination of chemotherapies. Um, combination of drugs, right, maybe combining right. chemo drugs with, I probably maybe could, you know, end up in a clinical trial. Yeah, right, but there's, say, there's clinical trials. Yes. But there's not a, there's not a, oh, when you progress on this, you're going to, uh, right. like, this is the next thing in our toolbox. Like, yeah, I that's, already kind of knew, yeah. right, when I was on Tarsiva, I knew that there was Tigrisso probably down the line for me. And that okay. was like, uh, okay, like, good. Like, I have a next option. Right now, I don't really have a right, next option. Right, that's what I meant. Option. You don't really have, right. You don't really have a next option. For example, um, um, Judy, like the ALK positive. So we have, we have quite a bit more than EGFR. So we have crisotinib, seritinib. Electinib. Loratinib. Uh, loratinib. Okay, so loratinib was just the one that was just um, approved not too long ago. So there's a lot of people already on loratinib. So basically, they tell me, Juanita, this is it. After this, there's nothing else for me unless they do the combo, like Sarah said. Um, Immunotherapy does not work for L positive. Uh, from what I, it doesn't. Know. It doesn't really work for EGFR either. But it uh, it, it can enhance. It, it can work in, in combination with chemo yes, yes, chemo regimens. Yeah. yeah, but I think for you guys, yes. But I think for L, no. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, someone correct me. But <laughs> they're gonna. Oh, they will. <laughs> no, I know they will, girl. But um, but I, yeah, I don't think immuno. For us, even in a combo, I don't think it, it works for us. So, um, so for ALK positive, loratinib is the last one. Is there clinical trials out there? Yeah, probably. But like what I was trying to say, I mean, what, what I meant, and I, it probably came out wrong, is like, you know, after uh, Tegrisso, there isn't another already FDA approved drug for serum. Right. say, okay, well, boom, now if this not working, it should go to that one. Just like for us, our last one is loratinib. After that, right. I'm still on the second one. I'm still on seritinib. So, God forbid, everything anything comes back. I have progression. Well, more, I'm considered net. So if I have reoccurrence, then the next right. one will probably be electinib and then loratinib, which I don't want to even do a loratinib. I heard horrible things about it, but I, I'm happy where I'm at. So <laughs> that's why we do what we do. That's why Sarah and I you know, went with our go-to foundations and went to the Hill to express that we need the research and the research, I mean, uh, we, the funding for the research, but we don't get the funding, guys, because again, I'm going to say, and I say it a million times, and I'm going to say it until the day I die, is the stigma. Yep. The stigma. I don't care. I could tell them a thousand times, look, but non-smokers, non-smokers, former smokers, not, they don't care. It's, they're like the blind, I mean, the deaf monkey, and they're just like, 
It's a smoking disease. No, it's not a smoker disease my th- anymore. You know, but my theory about that is that, you know, it really, it, it shows how effective the whole anti-smoking campaign yes. was yes. because it was like once there was a link established between smoking and lung cancer, they really went on the attack to, you know, say this is, you know, people need to quit smoking. Smoking causes lung yes. cancer, which is all true. But what it did in people's brains was it made people, it made the association between lung cancer and smoking so strong that people think that's the only association. So there is this idea because for years you turn on the TV, you see these gruesome ads or you look at a cigarette ad and it's like, (coughs) you know, you know, they teach it in the schools. Don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke lung cancer, smoke lung cancer. smoke. And it's like, so people just equate the two. They're like, so they hear one, they think of the other, they hear smoking, they think lung cancer. And then the other way around, they hear lung cancer, they think smoking. Mm -hmm. And, um, we all know now know that no, it's it, right. it is it, it's it's it can be a smoker's disease, but it is a disease of people who have lungs, yes. and it is on the rise among young yes. non-smoking oh, women. Yes. Uh, I mean, to to a shocking degree, and it's it's almost epidemic that people don't even know about because I still get asked that. I've been asked that by doctors. I mean, I was at a urologist last year because I was having bladder problems, and he says, oh, lung cancer, smoker. And I was like, you're a fucking doctor, man. Like, knock it <laughs> off. Knock yeah. it off. You know, and and uh, it just, but that is, that it does, it impacts, it, it impacts funding for the disease. It impacts perce- public perception of the disease because there is this, oh, well, you know, these people deserve it. And uh, it's, it's kind of disgusting right. to think that. Yeah, um, I know, I know, because I get it too. Uh, but I, I check them. You know me with my little attitude. Oh, I check them. <laughs> Doctor, oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, nurse, stranger at a grocery store. I don't give a shit where I'm at. Oh, I'm going to check them. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I educate them first and I do educate them. But yeah, it, it's that stigma. So that's why I'm always, I mean, I think in my area, I was like, when I was diagnosed, everyone was in shock. Like, oh my God, how did she get lung cancer? And I remember people talking, she don't smoke, she don't smoke, she don't smoke. But here I am. And I'm always, now I do this, you know, my, uh, my uh, neighbors or my community, they watch it or, you know, they know of me, they know, excuse me, all the advocacy work I do. I think here, in East Chicago, Indiana, if, if they go out and they say, oh, yeah, lung cancer. No, honey, he's not a, a smoker disease anymore. Yeah, one of our girls back home has it. And, but know, I because- think that's why it's so important to tell people. Like, I will, I'll tell my story to anybody who will listen. You know, I'll be sitting on a... I'm sorry, honey. I'm- <laughs> that's okay. If, you, if your dad says, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I I'm say, sorry. yeah. They want, me, they want me to babysit. They're asking me while I'm interviewing you. Your of course she said. can babysit that. She lives to babysit. <laughs> I know. You know that. Of course, of course. I'd babysit if I were closer. <laughs> I know, and it? Sarah said she would babysit she lived closer. <laughs> I don't mind watching her, but I have to deliver jewelry tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I, I saw paparazzi jewelry too, so I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> I do all that fun stuff. You do so, everything. I know, right? But let me but, see. yeah. Yeah, it's no, no. Talking, I'm reading the comments. No, it's just it's that's that's why oh, another reason why we do what we do because if it's it you know if we're not out there screaming and yelling for more funding, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna do that for us, and um, that's you know that's why right. I've been involved in the advocacy. You right. reading more? Yeah, do we, we have, have more yeah. questions? Um, um, not really questions. Um, Jan has said that she progressed on. A, a fat and nib, um, yeah, and she did two rounds of chemo, and I'm still progressing. So now we are trying <sighs> immunotherapy, even though there is no evidence that it will work for my EGFR, grasping at straws at this point. Janice, ah. my love and my prayers goes out to you. I will pr- say a special prayer for you tonight, sweetheart. Um, Ugo Rizzo uh, was talking about God. He he 
he did a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Hugo. I'll, I'll read it later. It's a lot to read. Uh, your wife, Martha, said you're doing a great job. Thank you for doing the store and advocacy are so important. And she thanked me for interviewing. You're welcome, Martha. <laughs> Send you a bunch of kisses, girlfriend. And then, um, okay, yeah, I think that's it. If I miss any, sorry, guys. We'll, um, Sarah will go through it afterwards and she'll answer them. Um, we just, if we miss any questions. Yeah, I can see them after the fact, right? I yeah. can go back and like rewatch. Yeah. Okay. You yeah, because sure it's all like whizzing past so fast yeah. on my phone. I'm like, oh, this person's watching. Yeah. But I, yeah, I no, didn't know to like say hello to anybody. I've never done this before. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> You're doing great. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Sarah, share with, with the audience, everyone watching, what gives you hope and what what hope and inspiration can you give to our other lung cancer brothers and sisters that are watching that might not be feeling hopeful, might be feeling doubtful. Like Janice, she says she's grasping at straws at this point. You know. Well, it, that breaks it, my heart because I love her. And, yes. You know, it, it just to, I know. Just to read this, and I'm trying not to cry. I really, I, I try okay. not to, but it's just so heartbreaking because, you know, like my husband said, you meet these people and then they're gone and he's like, I don't want to meet no more of your lung cancer friends because I meet them, I get close to them and they're gone and he's been hurt. Yeah, but, that, but that's a very real, uh, you know, uh, like I would be lost without the community of lung cancer yes, patients. I, I would be absolutely lost because I have said to so many people, the pace of research and the pace of, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably a very exciting time to be a cancer researcher. It's probably an exciting time to be an oncologist yes. because you can offer hope to your patients hope that wasn't available to even 10 years ago, even five years ago. Yes. And, um, you know, like you asked, what gives me hope? That's a huge part of what gives me hope. Um, <coughs> but we as patients need one another so much because the, the research is advancing so quickly, the doctors can't even always keep up with it. So yeah. people will go on these groups that we're a part of and say, you know, this is what's happening. I'm having progression. And boom, 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 boom. You get 25 people from all over the country who know exactly yes. what you're going through. They have a similar situation and they say, talk to your doctor about this. Do that. I mean, uh, there's so much great support within the patient community that I think it, it gives people information to take to their doctors and to say, you know, I heard about this. What about this? And I'm not talking about some cockamamie crap right. like, uh, like, oh, I read online that, you know, you should stick coffee grounds up your butt. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> but like leg legitimate, legitimate stuff, you know, that like, you know, if I hear of somebody who's in my situation, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, that's <laughs> out there. You know it. That's People probably told you that. <laughs> don't tell me you did it, Juanita. <laughs> I don't want to know. I do not want to know if you did that. No, if it was, if, I, if, if someone tells me, I promise you 100% is going to save your life. You know oh, we all would. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be well, right, right there. There is crazy things like that. No, but it's, uh, you know, again, I just, I'm just saying that the, that whole, yeah. you know, the dark side of, of being part of a community like that <laughs> is that you, you lose, you lose people and you lose yeah. people that you've really grown to care about. And when I was first diagnosed and first found like the longevity boards on Facebook and stuff, yeah. and I started getting to know people Somebody would post, oh, so-and-so died, and I would think, oh, well, that's terribly sad, but who's so-and-so? Like, yeah. I don't know, yeah. you know, oh, we lost John, and I'd be like, oh, God, that's kind of rough, but I don't know who that oh, is. Yeah. But when I was around for long enough that these were people that I've actually met in person, people that I've hugged, people that I've shared mm -hmm. messages with, people that I've laughed over dinner with, you know, had a drink with in the bar at the summit. <clears throat> yeah. When those are the people that we're losing, I think, wow, that's like a real kick in the gut. Yeah, um, so that, I think, is the downside to having a support community. But what gives me hope is the stories of other patients. What also mm -hmm. gives me hope is science and what mm -hmm. they're able to do now. And it is an explosive, explosive time in cancer research. 
um, Juanita and Paul did medical research program mm -hmm. and we were in Washington sitting on these panels with these scientists evaluating these uh, scientific proposals and that was Azania hopeful. keeps calling me tell her that on Facebook live okay I'm sorry my daughter keeps that's calling okay me. Um, but I felt like that was an incredibly hopeful experience because mm -hmm. Reading those proposals, I don't know how you feel. It was one of the hardest things I ever had to do intellectually. It was yeah. like language that I was like, it was I was in right. so deep with the medical lingo. Yes. Um, not even medical. It was like scientific because we're yeah. talking about like on the molecular level, yes. and I was like, oh my god, this is like beyond me. But to to be reading those proposals and to see what they're coming up with yes. and to then sit yes. in a room full of these scientists who were brilliant, you know, yes. I felt like a like a boob sitting there. I was like, <laughs> well, I, I like this proposal because but I, I was so I was in awe of how smart these people were. I was yeah. like, you know, we glorify our, you know, pop stars and our athletes and everything. We should be glorifying these medical researchers because they are the rock stars in my book. They are. Yes. I mean, I, I was blown away by the stuff that um that was that they were coming up with and that's that's in the pipeline and that's why we need to restore that 20 million dollars yes, to yes. to the you know the budget of the lung cancer research program um because we're languishing you know other diseases that are much less fatal than lung cancer ha are they're funded to you know 10 times what lung yes. cancer is funded and we've got the top killer uh cancer and yeah. it, and it's again partly because of the stigma but it, it's like it, it's down in the basement of the yes. funding and you know we need to jack that up because the researchers are out there they're coming up with breakthroughs they need the money to to test these things out and to keep yes. to, you know to keep the pressure on so that we're going to have more and more breakthroughs yes so that was one of the reasons why we went uh, with Go To Foundation was they promised, um, God, how much was it? Twenty million for uh, for right. lung cancer research. Then they took took money away from us, and then they don't, they said they were only going to give us nine, and then it, they bumped it up to fourteen. We went up there, we fought and talked and fought, of course, and say no, we want the twenty million that you promised us. So that right. was the whole thing that we they do it every year. So every and year, that program right. was funded at twenty million dollars in two thousand and nine. So ten years ago, the lung cancer program had twenty million dollars. Yes. Now we're ten years down the road. There's more and more promising research yes. coming out, and the yes. and the funding is lower. So yes. uh, that that's infuriating to me because so, you know again, like we're dying. We're not. You know. Yeah. It, 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 it's. It's serious business. Right. So that's why we do what we do, guys. And that's why I do it, so we could all live longer, so Sarah could live longer, for you, Janice, to live longer. Uh, and I'm not going to stop. My kids know, my husband knows, it's my passion. Uh, when people hear me talk about lung cancer, they tell me you're so passionate, you like glow. I'm like, oh, am I glowing? I'm like, am I glowing with money? <laughs> I, need to, I need the money to go with the glowing so I can buy my dream house. <laughs> but you know what? I, I know that God continues to bless me in, way, in other ways that, um, not the ways that I want to be blessed, but he knows what he's going to bless me in. So he's like, it's my way, girl. But, um, you know, like I said, um, that's why we do what we do. That's why I do these interviews. Um, I want to interview different lung cancer brothers and sisters out there and other cancers as well because I like to hear about other cancer because I'm not I know lung cancer I don't know much right. about you know other cancers so it's good to learn and, and you know and know about all these different and what they're doing over there but so and that's why I do this to educate to bring awareness and someone out there's got to someone important someone big up there's got to see one of these darn videos and say you know what let's do something for lung cancer for these people and that's all I want. And I'm going to keep doing them until I can't no more. And I'm not going anywhere. So I'm, I'm here for a while. I already, <laughs> I, already, I already claimed it. I already claimed it. I mean, I'm going to be an old lady 
trying to still lift weights and my great grandkids are going to be like, Grandma, sit down. You, you're too old. No, I'm, not, I'm not old. You know? But And that's why I do it. So, you know, I want to thank you, Sarah, for... Thank you for, so much for know, letting oh, me do welcome. it. Oh, God. Thank you for sharing your story, um, wow. giving us advice, suggestions, inspiration, inspirational words. It just means a lot. I, I'm pretty sure uh, my friend Judy, I've known Judy for like ever, and she always watches. And I know that it breaks her heart because she sees, you know, all these different faces of lung cancer. But Judy, you fight with us, girl. I think earlier you said what you could do. You know what? I have a draft letter. I could send it to you. You send it to our our congressman here yep. and our senator send it about the funding send it girl you can email it to them and then but you got to just in the email them back did you read my letter did you read my letter you know get on them um and i will send it to you i love you too i will send it to you and anyone out there that wants to get involved to help us you know today is lung cancer world day so um I actually put on there i was i was debating on what organization to put to donate and i just but just donate five dollars and so I said, okay, well. All right, I said the same thing. I'm like, yeah. if all my Facebook friends gave $5, like that oh would be a good God. substantial uh, exactly. amount exactly. of money. But yes. I do. I have very generous friends who have, have donated because we're doing the Breathe Deep Walk for Longevity okay. again in uh in October, this is going to be okay. our third year doing it, and we're very awesome. competitive. We like to be the top team. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't so, blame you. But I ask and I ask often because, yeah. it, you know, if you can't do it, I understand that. But, you know, it, you know, if you can scrape up five dollars to exactly. donate to that, exactly. it, it, it means a lot to me because it actually says this is somebody who actually cares what I'm going through exactly. and and cares about improving outcomes for patients yes. like me. I agree. So it's not late, guys. Um, if you go on my Facebook page, I think I set it up for longevity as well. Um, and, you know, then my birthday in November, I always uh, pick a foundation <laughs> um, to donate. Um, you guys there could donate whatever. Um, you, you don't understand. Five dollars could go a long way. It could, it could save someone's life. Trust me, um, that money goes for research. I've been there. You know, Sarah and I, we were we sat, like she said, um, looking at these um, applications, these proposals <laughs> with these doctors. This was last November. We did it. We do work like that. I mean, I didn't know what I was reading. I was like, what the hell am I reading? I don't know. I, was, <laughs> I, literally, I literally printed out the sheets and I had my phone, the dictionary. And I was oh, like, yeah, okay. yeah. That's like that cancer dictionary. Yeah. I had that like, yep, yep. And, and that I was, was all up. words to know what I was reading because they were medical scientific words. But it was a great experience and I was part of that. So, yes, it, the money does go for research. Trust me, I'm there when they hand out checks. To, to these um, um, these young investigators that are doing research for for lung cancer, and now there's a big breakthrough in small cell. Small cell is horrible, and I thank God because I used to pray. I used to pray as the Lord let us I go let a breakthrough happen for small cell. I used to pray and look. Yeah, you know He's gonna answer it at His time, but you know, but it, my prayer was answered. So. You know, prayer does right, work. and we we are in a sense. You know, I, I mean, you hate to say that we're lucky to have lung cancer because we're not, but we are lucky in that we have two of the really great targetable yes. mutations. But yes. like my friend Ellen has the KRAS mutation, yes. and KRAS has really struggled to find yes. like a, a, a an effective treatment and a targeted therapy yes. like we need to continue research so people with that mutation can have the hope that that we have so okay we're going to well, keep up the work so judy said judy did i know this she said her dad passed away from small cell oh i didn't oh, know wow. that judy did i know that did you ever tell me girl if you did i'm sorry you know i forget i got chemo brain um so so judy as a caregiver and, and to do it in memory of your dad, join us. We need a lot of people to join us. You don't have to have lung cancer to, to, to be an advocate, to participate. You, as a caregiver, I, I met a couple of people that were at the GoTo Foundation that their aunt or someone in their family oh, had lung yeah. cancer, and they got Definitely. involved, and they're advocating. You could do that for your dad. Uh, she said, yeah, he was 55 years old. I'm so sorry, oh, wow. honey. But you could advocate, and you could probably advocate for small cell. Girl, I could hook you up. But I, I, we, need, we need people. We need people like you. I mean, it doesn't matter if your dad died five years ago, 10, 20. Uh, he still died of small cell lung cancer. So we, we need, 
you know, you'd be great, you know, to advocate for small cell. Um, and so, you know, just, you know, today, if you guys can't, $5, come on, you can pay tomorrow, do tomorrow, $5, give it to longevity, give it to whoever. Um, go to LCFA if you want, go to GoTo Foundation if you want, go to, I think there's one called Lung Cancer. Oh, shoot. What is it? Lung cancer research? No, I don't know. Just, you know, while you're talking about this, I just, I, my, I'm on my phone and I just got like a text message, like pop up thing uh -huh. that I got a don donation to my longevity fundraiser. Jeez, so now I, go. now I feel like we're doing a telethon. <laughs> I know, right? I know. That's <laughs> awesome. So yeah, just call now. <laughs> yeah, call now. <laughs> but, um, it, it does help any little bit helps. So, um, for my birthday, I might, um, I always do, I always did longevity. Last year I did LCFA. And then I think this year I'm going to do go to foundations. And so, you know, I try to alternate, you know, and, and, yeah, and rotate the different um, lung cancer uh, foundations because um, they are, they we're all one. And, you know, they, you know, they do things differently, but they're right. They're the do same slightly phase. different things, but it's yes. all working for the lung exactly. cancer community. It's all, exactly. Exactly. So, Thank you guys. Um, you know, make sure you share this video. Make sure you tag someone if you know if the EGFR, someone that just got newly uh, diagnosed, and it's just I know how it is, and um, just tag them this video or share it with them. I also put it on my YouTube, so if you know people that don't have Facebook, they could go to my YouTube channel, and I have all the videos out there. So. Um, but thank you, Sarah, so much for your time. Thank you, Juanita. And oh, thanks to welcome. everyone who was watching. I kept yes. seeing little things popping up saying, yeah. this person's watching this person. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Hi. <laughs> so I appreciate so, yeah. that so much because I posted it on my page. And, awesome. you know, I'm self-conscious awesome. about doing stuff like this. But it's so important that, yes, you know. Yes, it is. And you did great. Yeah, and you put, gave some great information. So thank you so much. Thank All right. You. Thank and, you so much, I honey. I wish you the best for your um, breathe deep. Kick some butt out there. Raise that money, girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we intend to. Okay. See All right. You well, thank you. Honey. Have a good night and have a good weekend. All right. You too. Okay, Talk bye. to you soon. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Love you too.